Hello, Miss Gell is back, and we are continuing reading the book brought to you by Dreamscape. This is Spider Bots Rising, Chapter 15. One of them. That's a good one, Chuck chuckled. You're just going to go waltzing, go waltzing down there with the zombie spiders. You got a twisted sense of humor, Abby. It is not a joke, Abby responded. The World Wide Web, this net, it is being used to hurt my people. The spider bots are being controlled. It seems clear that the center of the orb is its power. We must get inside the orb to st stop it. So I will get inside the orb. Hang on, Chuck cut in. He wasn't laughing anymore. Since when are these robot creeps your people? They were never nothing but mean to you. They ain't your people. We are your people. Besides that, said Nigel, why must you be the one to get inside the orb? We should all go together. It improves our chances of shutting the net down. And frankly, it improves our chances of getting out in one piece. Yes, maybe, Abby said. But look at the part of the orb where the bots are entering. Do you see any defenses? Do you see any t towers or walls? But don't you think Queen Arachne would want to p p protect what she's built? Of course, Nigel agreed, but I still don't, Abby cut him off. I think the net is acting as its own gate. I think it is scanning the bots as they go through it. See the slight glow as they pass. I can read them, but it cannot read you. It will know you are not one of the, the, them. But you're not one of them, Chuck had forgotten to whisper. He ducked and quieted down again. I mean, not really. I am a spider bot, Abby said simply. Okay, Abby, the dream seeker said, trying to think of a way around this. Let's say you get inside the orb, then what? Are you going to take on Queen Rochney all by yourself, not to mention all the other bots in there? No, Abby replied. I will, will join the other bots below. I will, will go through the net like the rest of them. I will not be detected. Then I will find a way to let you in from the inside. But how will you let us in? Nigel asked. Even I don't truly really understand how exactly the net works. And once you're in, you may not have much time to figure it out. And what about these metal heads? Chuck asked wildly. They're all under some kind of mind control. Who knows what they'll do? What if they realize you're faking it? They could be programmed to do some real damage to outsiders or worse. This is all true, Abby said coolly. I do not have the answers to these questions, but the dream seat Gape is in danger, so I must still try. Right, Dream Seeker? The Dream Seeker felt her stomach go cold. She remembered what she had said in the Duskmere Forest. She remembered the warnings of the council. She was scared for her friend, but she knew that Abby was right. There was no other way. Please be careful, Abby, the Dream Seeker said. I will. And before there was time to say anything else, she turned and scuttled away. Lightning flashed and thunder cracked overhead. The sky was almost black now. Chuck, Nigel, and the dream seeker watched Abby from their hiding place. No longer worried about being seen, she scaled the rest of the wall with ease. As she reached the canyon floor, she matched her steps to the box. She marched smoothly into the swarm. Her form was perfect. Her legs moved in time with theirs. Her sensor stared just as blankly ahead. She looked just like all the rest of the spider bots. Soon the flow pushed her into the middle of a row. The dream seeker picked her out from the crowd only by the question mark shaped crack in her tank. She watched from above as Abby marched steadily towards the wall of the glowing orb. Her row was almost at the front now. They were all bathed in the green, harsh green light. The dream seeker held her breath. Abby was almost in. Could this really work? But a moment later, the bot beside Abby stumbled. Its legs seemed to be stuck in a small hole in the ground. And Abby broke rank. In a flash, her leg whipped out and lifted the bot's leg 
back out of the hole. Her head did not turn. Her eyes did not waver. The motion had been so quick and so smooth. It was like nothing had happened at all. But the bot beside her was able to keep walking. The dream seeker's hands were clenched tight. It seemed like Abby had gotten away with it. Until she reached the wall, Abby and her row of spider bots marched up to the orb. The bots on either side of her sailed right through like it was nothing. Abby kept in perfect step with them, but something went wrong. When she went back to step through the wall, it became oddly solid. Abby was frozen for a moment in a cloak of green light. Then she was thrown backward, high in the air. She landed below the place where the others were hiding with a sickening crunch. Suddenly, every spider bot in the canyon stopped. All at once, they turned their smooth chrome heads towards Abby. Their sensors glowed brightest red. Then hundreds of robotic voices said as one, lasers activate. No! Chuck was up and over the rocks before the dream seeker knew what was happening. He jumped off and plunged down the canyon wall towards Abby. And that is the end of our chapter. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I clearly made the wrong prediction. The last chapter we read, I was sure that maybe Abby was going to get brainwashed. Maybe she still is. I don't know, but it looks like because of her glitch, they're clearly seeing her as not one of them. What is going to happen? Is the queen going to come out? Are they going to actually shoot their lasers? Is Chuck going to save her? Again, so many questions. I've noticed throughout reading this book that there are so many incredible predictions that we can make throughout this story. Something that I want to challenge you with is let's think about what we've read so far. And if you need to go back and reread stories, that's OK, too, because good readers oftentimes will reread things over and over again, whether it's to break down vocabulary, look for keywords, main ideas. And for this challenge, I want you to go back and look at the sequence of relationships. Can you pick out at which points did Chuck and Abby's friendship develop because clearly in the beginning he did not trust her but now he's lunging towards her and trying to save her where were those moments in the story so far did their friendship begin to positively develop and let's make a connection to even our own lives think about someone in your own life did you have a hard time getting to know them in the beginning Maybe you didn't like them very much. Maybe for me, it was a sibling that I didn't like very much. And then over time, we became best friends. Can you think of someone in your life that maybe you didn't get along with in the beginning, but over time and over a sequence of events, you grew to, in fact, love them and have a strong relationship with them. So that's my challenge for you. Thanks for reading along and I will see you all next time.